The Prophet would, when he would visit Aisha, when he was his day to spend the night with her, what did he do? He would go out to Jannatul Baqi, he would go out to the graveyard, he would go there and meet them and greet them. And he said, inna inshallah bikum We're going to come back and meet you one day. That's what he would do. Nearly every other night when he would be there, he would go to the graveyard and remember, this is going to be my head, Uthman ibn Affan, he would weep. They said, why do you weep so much for when you see a grave? There's more scary things than al akhirah That's going to happen. Why do you weep at the grave? He said, because the prophet, the messenger said to me, the first station, the station of akhirah is the grave. That's the first station. If you're successful inside the grave, whatever is after is going to be easy and simple for the individual. That is the moment a person is left all on their own. So these people, they don't care. They even openly said, we're on our way to hell. So they said, we may as well drag as many people as we can to be in hell with us. So we, like we have a party in this dunya, so in hell we're going to have a party. Look at their mentality. Look at how sick their mind is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us, whereby the person will highlight, Oh my Lord, let me come back to this dunya. That I may do for as sadaqa wa akum min as salihin That's the Prophet, he described this hadith al Bara ibn Azim. Read this long hadith speaking about the journey of the soul. The journey of death. What will happen to every single one of us when he leaves this dunya? When he's placed inside the grave, the individual, you find two angels who come to that grave with that individual, Munkar and Nakir. I'm going to ask him this question. Man Rabbuk, Madinu, who is this messenger who was sent to you? You know, all of us today, we know what the answers are. My Lord is Allah. My messenger is the Prophet, my Dini al Islam. We all know the answers. It's a strange thing. It's very strange that Allah has given us the questions and given us the answers. He's given us the answers, what more do we want? But we can't live to that life. Because some people are going to say in the grave, ah, ah, la adri, la adri, I don't know, I don't know. We said, kathabta, you lied. Signs were given to you. Signs were highlighted to you. And the angel will come and smite that individual. That all of the, if the living human being could hear it, that screaming or that screeching or that shout, everybody would drop down dead. That's how powerful that sound would be. Everything hears that sound of this individual inside the grave. That's going to be the wicked individual. And prior to that, the soul is going to be snatched out of this individual. It's going to be pulled out of this individual. The soul doesn't want to leave this dunya. It doesn't want to leave. It's enjoying this dunya. It's enjoying its life. It hides within the body. And as you find it, it'll be pulled out like a hot fork is placed inside wool. How you find a hot fork begins to stick to wool. So it'll be screeched and pulled out of this individual. And then this individual brought forth he won't be lifted to the heavens. He won't be allowed to enter into heaven, heavens. Ever, heaven will never open for individuals who committed shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His record replaces as Sijin and being thrown down upon this earth. And inside the realms, the realms of the darkness of the grave, you'll find all these elements will come to begin to take place in that darkness of these questions being asked to this individual and the grave constricting for this individual. You find inside Surah Taha, that those individuals, woman arada and dhikri fa innalu ma'ishatan danka. Those individuals who turn away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either the literal meaning is they're going to have a wretched life. They're going to have a bad life. Even they possess the world and the dunya and everything that they own, there's going to be absence, hollowness inside their heart, their chest. There's something missing. The second meaning, deeper meaning, as ulama mentioned, the ma'ishatan danka is fil qabr. There's going to be restriction inside the grave. Every single one of us is going to be restricted inside the grave. And the, 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 the ribs of the individual intertwine inside the grave. Be brought so close together. For what purpose? That this person turn away from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Person say, oh my Lord, why have you made me blind on this day? You know when I lived on this dunya, I could see. I, I was visible to see everything around me inside this dunya. I could see it clearly. Why am I blind today? Allah gives a response, you're blind today. Because in this dunya, we showed you our signs and you turned away from them. And today we're going to forget you. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgets an individual, that's the end, that's the doom of the individual. When Allah forgets you, when Allah leaves you alone, 
even inside this dunya, it's a trial and tribulation. The more deeper a person goes into Muharramat, the more they're left inside it, it's a sign that Allah's left this individual. There may be a few individuals who may awaken, but the general sunnah Allah al ard is what's known as su'ul khatima, an evil ending. It's an evil ending for those individuals. We're not here to judge any individuals. But if you go and study the life of certain individuals, when they leave this dunya, on a few occasions inside my life, I've been inside a room where dead people have been inside there. And two opposite people, I've witnessed them inside my life. I've seen the worst of the worst of a dead body with bullets all sprayed across their chest and a foul smell coming from this dead corpse. And I say to the people around them, do you smell this filthy smell inside this room? They say, we can't smell anything. I had to leave the room. I had to leave that environment that Allah is showing me right there that this person and what this person carried out inside their life, the life that they've lived, every single sin on the face of the earth that they've carried out and what they've done inside their lives. None of you know who this individual is and none of you will ever know. Who knows, who knows? And who don't know, don't know. And like the opposite. That this time, this year, I washed their body exactly the opposite. That a person from being from a cold, dead body turned to fragrance and light and peace and rest. These are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He shows to people. He shows His signs. That's why we should remember death. Remember death, remembering the journey back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three things they travel in all of us inside this dunya. And right when you get to that grave, two of these things, they leave all of us and one remains put behind for every single one of us. The three things that travel in all of us, our family members, our wealth and our property and our good deeds. Two of them right at that moment, they walk away. All your beloved family members, they walk away from you. They leave you. When they walk away and the final steps have walked away from you, those final steps walk away from you. Two, those two angels then enter and they raise the individual up inside the grave and they pose those questions to him. The only thing that will remain is our own actions. This over-reliance on people that we live this world more and more, that somebody will help me, someone will save me, someone will intercede for me, someone will come and do these good deeds for me. This is what many of us Muslims have become. In the daily grind of our life, even haram things, we speak to people who do haram things, they grind this haram. They deep, have a deep conviction. This is what I want to do inside my life. I want to obtain this. Even on Muslims, don't be surprised. Don't think everything about that is, is dark and gloomy. They enjoy the things that they do. They love the things that they do. They feel it's a good life for them. They don't feel it's a temptation. They feel it's a part of their life. That's how you know that their souls have become dead. It's not the eyes who become blinded, it's when the hearts become blinded. And our hearts shouldn't be like that. Our hearts should be the softest of hearts. Prophet said, mentioned, visit the graves. Before I prevented you from doing so because of certain reasons, but go and visit the grave to remind you about death to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what the, the grave, the death should do to an individual, is awaken the individual in my preparation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That all of us have to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that inside Surah Al-Ankabood, Kullu nafsin da'ikatul maut. Your all, every soul is going to taste, taste death and, and you're going to return back to me, return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those individuals, if you look at the end of Surah Al-Mu'minun, that what many of us individuals are, we think that well, we should be given another opportunity to return back to this, to this dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about these individuals. Read the end of Surah Al-Mu'minun. When the individual is saying, O oh my Lord, Rabbi Rji'oon, la'alli a'malu salihan fi ma tarak. Kalla innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. These people are going to say, Oh my Lord, give me respite. Let me go back to this dunya and do righteous actions. Kalla. Nay, these are, these are vain words. These words have no meaning. These are just words. You had that ample opportunity inside your life to repent, to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wherever you are, death will come to you. Even if you happen to be inside your fortified palaces, it will come to you. You cannot escape from death. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Surah al Jumma as well. Speak about that. Qul inna al mawta alladhi tafiruna minhu fa innahu mulaqikum thumma turadduna ila alim al ghaybi wa shahada fa yunabbi'ukum bima kuntum ta'maloon. Allah says that you know that death that you're trying to run away from. Fa innahu mulaqikum is going to meet you. It's going to slap you straight in your face. It's going to come straight all of a sudden to you. That's what you find what's known as a sudden death. You know, many people say, oh, he was, he was a good person. He was too young to die. There's no such thing as too young to die. You're agile. 
Allah knows when to take your life. You've been destined to die at a certain location, certain time, certain place, certain location. That's the end of the life of that individual. No one can argue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say that why did this individual die at this moment in time? If it's a sudden death, it's a lesson for us. The rest of us to see, to take that ibrah. Now, this suddenly has happened to my friend, to my loved one, to my family members, to my parents, to somebody that I, I've grown up with. What, what should I do inside a person's life? What is the, the sensible individual? The sensible individual is one who sees the signs, sees these symbols and begins to prepare for that journey or that return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we find some other ahadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, whereby speaking about that the whole world, that the whole world begins to say that we, we rest from this individual. When this individual is taken from this dunya, if he's a good person, then you find that person is at ease and at rest. And they say, quickly hasten to bury this individual, to give him his, his good glad tidings, to give him the reward inside al akhirah. And if he's an evil person, they say, quickly bury him so we can take the weight off our shoulders. And as you find that good people, you find by every good name, they're made mention of on the face of this earth. And every evil, wicked person, and the face of this earth, when they're living, they call them by these bad, wicked names. When they leave this dunya, there's nothing good speaking about these individuals. So how do you want to leave, as I said, leave a legacy behind on the face of this earth? Do you want to be known by every wicked, futile name on the face of this earth? That's what you're known by on this earth is how you're going to be treated inside al akhirah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever wants to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever loves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah loves to meet that individual. Aisha, our mother, she mentioned, but we all, we have this hatred for, of death, this concept of hatred of death, because nobody wants to part from this dunya. Because why have we become so tuned to this dunya? It's part of our system, part of our life. 50, 60, 70 years living here, working here, friends, whatever, enemies, whatever it may be, it becomes part of your system, your blood system. So it's very hard, hard to leave that behind. Person feels that. But within all of these difficulties, the real believer within themselves, they know that this is all like, a, like an eggshell, it will crack at any moment in time. They're looking for that purity within themselves that I have to work and strive to get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person who has that yearning desire inside their heart, that I want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if I've committed sins in my life, but I have that feeling inside my life that I know that Allah will forgive me, He will pardon me, and I take those, those steps. Don't expect to sit there and say that, oh, this will just be washed away in my life. This haram that I do, it will just be plucked up. Some angel will come and take it away from me. You have to physically make that change. Your soul, train your soul, work on your soul. Your soul is the most powerful tool. When a soul, as I say, is conquered, your soul is ruled by your mind. You have the ability to control your nafs. Even though nafs will waver, all of our nafs, it will waver. It will go here and there. All of our souls will be tempted by certain things. But an intelligent soul, a nafs, nafsul lawama, the blaming soul, is a soul that quickly recognizes, I've erred, I've made a mistake. I'll pick up and carry on again. That's why Ibn Qayyim al jawziya in his works of Madarij al-Salikin speaks about the person who sins. He bounces many steps forward. That's why we call it steps of the traveler. So when a person commits a sin, he doesn't collapse. Rather, he bounces many steps forward. He sees that I made this mistake. How can I return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And we need to pull the rope in a sense to try to find our way back in that good community in returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq and ability to repent back to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Him to implore Him to forgive our sins, our previous life, our previous actions, and our future life and actions to strengthen us to do good deeds and to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a good state. Wa qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru li wa lakum wa li jameel muslimin fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim.